So we're gonna get started, even though um, I was hoping that we had more um, people here representing District 3, at least District 3. This is information that we wanna get out there to the residents of District 3, but I wanna thank everyone that's here today, um, and, and your input is very important to us. But before we get started, I would like to um, pledge, uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance so we can all stand, please. Captain, would you like to lead us? Pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. So my family are all veterans, and I was told that we mess up the Pledge of Allegiance every time we say it. It's supposed to be one nation under God, not one nation under God. <laughs> one nation under God. Um, so um, again, thank you. These are representatives from Twin Lakes and representatives from uh, uh, Edgewater Condos. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm just gonna show you a real quick video of what has been accomplished in District 3. Um, so I'm just gonna start it real quick. Clean water issue has been something that we have been fighting for for over 17 years. This development was built with the connections to the reclaimed water, but we never had access to the main plant to bring us the water. And finally, finally, the community is, is getting slowly all hooked up to reclaimed water. I got my hookup uh, sometime in the middle of October, and it's working fine for me. An average of uh, 2,000 gallons per iteration. Uh, I probably might spend 20 to 30,000 gallons, and it still is not gonna be even close what I used to pay before. My name is Cass Robertson. I'm at Haversham Road and in the Saxon Ridge subdivision, and I'm wanting to commend the mayor and the commission at City of Deltona for putting in the arrow, green arrow traffic light at the corner of Saxon and Finland. Um, it has helped tremendously for our subdivision as well as uh, the citizens of Deltona and anybody that comes to our area. Um, it's been a long time coming. I've been in this subdivision for 15, almost 16 years now, and um, I've actually been talking to the county as well as the city um, with the city commissioner prior to the ones that are sitting now. Um, and it's, it's, it's awesome that it's there. My name is Charles Kasner. I'm the president of Edgewater Condominiums, and I've been the president for 12 years. This is my 13th year. Several years ago, the city wanted to put in a, a park and also walking trails. It's improved the quality of life because uh, we, we have 312 units here, and and the vast majority of the people love to either bicycle or walk. And so they, they gave them opportunities to, to walk this. Plus, they, they put in a park right across the street that is used by uh, residents that have, have children here. And uh, so it's made all of us like I walked the trail and I'm 88. I think it's made all of us healthier and we're really enjoying life because, because of this project. some of the accomplishments that we have done in District 3, um, requesting, these are requests from the residents of District 3. Uh, we try to do as much as possible. Nothing happens overnight, but if you give us time, eventually we will get everything done. I don't know if you guys have noticed on Deltona Boulevard, we have installed the crossing lights, um, and they have the flashing lights on. We have upgraded the streets where we have, uh, the city has painted the crossings, uh, 
lines on it, and there's more to come uh, in that area. And so, first of all, just for those of you who don't know me, I am Maritza Avila Vasquez. I am the uh, commissioner for District 3 and the uh, vice mayor for this year. So um, to give you more information as uh, what's going on in the uh, area of Deltona Boulevard, which is also part of the CRA project, I would like to introduce Jerry Mays, our economic, economic development and ecological tourist uh, manager. And he's in charge of the CA project, has been since I was elected and even before I was elected, we're trying to, you know, see if we can finally put a closing to the CRA project on Deltona Boulevard. I know we came up with something. The residents loved it. Unfortunately, fell between the cracks. Not on our pro not our fault, but um, hopefully we can get something going and it can pass this time around. I apologize for the way the seats were set up today, but they got the, the room ready for the comp staff meeting tomorrow. That's happening here as well. So it was easier for, uh, you know, for us to accept this setup. And, and have it ready because it's at 8.30 in the morning, so I'm sorry if you could, and you could turn the seats if you want to for now, okay? So here's Jerry Mays to go over the project for uh, Deltona Boulevard. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm going to be talking about the CRA. This is what has progressed in the CRA, the plans that we have, and we'll start off with just a little bit of history on it. There we go. Um, this is an overall map of the CRA. It was, uh, CRA is Community Redevelopment Area. It was established in 2016. So we, we are still working on it. It is what is known as a TIF, TACRA Incremental Funding. Um, in 2016, all the taxes were right here, okay? I apologize, I'll set my cane down so I can move both my arms now. All right, in 2016, the taxes were here. The city and the county both got those taxes. There was no change. But the next year, the taxes were just a little more and that delta between them is what the city and the county got. And then each year going along, as we brought new businesses into the CRA, we've had two racetracks, uh, Hardee's, other businesses come into it. That increased the tax value in it. Uh, on Deltona Boulevard, 1200 Deltona Boulevard, the Veterans Administration Clinic came in, Crunch Fitness came in, um, Family Health Source, and a lot of other businesses have come into that plaza and the other plazas, and all this makes the tax commercial income to the city come in, which is good, because with that extra income, we don't have to raise eh, taxes on homeowners as much. Okay, so this, this helps in that fashion, and that's, that's my job, to recruit companies into the city. So, I divided it into three areas so we could talk about a little bit what the CRE has. This is the north side. This is Saxon Boulevard to I-4, and then Normandy to Deltona Boulevard. That one section. Um, I'll start out by saying when the CRA was established in 2016, it had one goal, one goal only, and this was transportation. In other words, what we're looking at, and I'll, it'll go more into it a little bit into the presentation, which I will try and get through fairly quickly. But what we're looking at is we have a really bad curve in North Normandy. People jokingly, or not so much jokingly, call it dead man's curve. In other words, you have the wooden barricades up there and they get knocked down, hit, whatever, by cars. About once a quarter, four or five times a year, somebody runs into them. It, it is a bad curve. It's a 35 mile an hour, but 
people go down to Deltona Plaza and imbibe a little bit or down on the further south end of Deltona Boulevard and then try and drive home and don't make the curve and mainly it's cars going north. So that's one of the areas that we want to improve. We want to four lane that section of road so that there is better control, people have better control over their vehicles. A four lane road tends to have less problems on people crashing than a two lane road. Captain, if I misstate something, you just feel free to jump in and say, you idiot, Yo, you can't say that. Um, I, 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 I go along with that, yeah, so people can move and I don't have to set at the stop sign. Okay, um, but this section we wanted to also redo that intersection at Deltona Boulevard in North Normandy. What we looked at when we started looking at the transportation in the CRA is you've got four lanes that turns into two lanes, that turns into four lanes, that turns into two lanes, and that type of thing. And this is bad, it's caused what, what is known as weaving, people having to change lanes, okay, at crunch points. One of them being Deltona Boulevard in North Normandy, and then expanding that in the weaving when you get up to Saxon, because it goes to three lanes at that point. Right hand turn straight through, left hand turn. So if we can sort of match it up all the way through, what that will give us is basically all the way up to Howland Boulevard, all the way down to Dirksen, okay, would be at least a four lane road. Redo that one area at Deltona Boulevard and Normandy for that intersection, leave south or east Normandy a two lane road. It's not a main feeder. Okay, but have the main road be Deltona Boulevard running all the way up to Howland. That way you don't have to get on I-4 to transverse in the city north and south. So it's very, very handy to have something like that, and it's a major safety factor. The central section is all four lane. Deltona Boulevard from North Normandy, that intersection, all the way down to the post office. Four lane, in fact, the four lane goes all the way down to Enterprise Road. Now at Enterprise Road, it turns back into a two lane again. So again, this is an area that we want to try and rectify. Now the issue being, it takes a long time to build up enough money to do major road changes. Not road repairs, but road changes. Uh, adding two lanes, so you have two lanes in each direction. Chances are we'll end up having probably to take some houses in that dead man's curve. But the city looks at it and says, okay, that's in the future. And there's no way we can do that type of thing at this point. Plus the price of houses has just gone sky high, so you know nobody can afford anything along those lines, buying multiple houses, okay? But it takes a long time to get enough money. The whole idea was adding the money up from the TIF is we would get enough money to match the river to sea TPO, the transit people. This is money from the federal down to the state, down to the county, over to the TPO. So it just takes time to get enough money to get 30% or 40% or whatever the match will be required at the time. And this, again, is the major thing. This is what the CRA was built for. Now, having said that, there have been a lot of changes in what we're doing at the CRA. Now we have a master plan that calls for street lighting improvements. That's good. Bus stop improvements, in other words, new shelters. This is not benches, but the shelters. We had a contract with the company. We no longer have that contract, and they don't maintain the bus shelters that are out there. So the city is looking at, no, we're not gonna go out and get a contract with another company. We'll go ahead and put in our own bus shelters and we will maintain them. 
because the other companies weren't maintaining it. ADA sidewalk repairs and safety improvements, the curb improvement, I was talking about dead man's curve, okay? The intersection improvements that was in the PowerPoint North, that's Deltona Boulevard and North Normandy. Again, the major part of it, expand North Normandy, Deltona Boulevard to Saxon, and Deltona Boulevard, Enterprise Road to Dirksen, into four lanes. And then as an add-on in the end for the economic development, which is the reason I'm here talking tonight instead of someone from Planning and Development Services, is I want to put in commercial sewer on the north side of Saxon so that area, many of the houses are empty between the Walgreens and the racetrack. And it is already zoned commercial. And let's start getting some businesses in that area. Again, m m almost none of the houses out there are homesteaded, which tells us the rental houses. Okay, there's still homes, we understand that. But if we can get commercial developers to come in, which we've talked to developers over the years, the issue is for them to buy the houses so they can tear them down, so they can build on those lots, and put in sewer, they can't afford it. They can't get enough return out of it to make it a feasible project. So we're looking at putting sewer on the north side of Saxon for that commercial area. Some of the things that we've been doing, and it just goes down the, the list, okay. Street lighting improvements. We have done improvements at Saxon and North Normandy intersection. Had uh, upgrades there with new fixture and higher wattage fixtures. The next area is North Normandy to Deltona Boulevard, and we're working on that, again, with additional lighting. All the lighting is on one side of the road. What we're looking at is put additional lighting on the other side of the road, okay? And it is directional, but it will be brighter lighting. It, it, it's very scientific, and I, I'm not good at science, okay? So it's very scientific as to the way the lights are focused and how much light. If you have too much light as you come up to an intersection, it confuses drivers at nighttime, so I'm told. Jerry, is that why there are purple lights on I-4 now? There are defective yeah. lights mm -hmm. all over the state that are popping up. Those lights need to be replaced, so they, we got the lights from the same the F dot got the lights from the same vendor. Mm -hmm. something and they're going bad, the filament in them. Even though I like the purple lights. <laughs> uh, it's neat. I really like the purple lights, but it's definitely a defective uh, light. Okay, I mentioned a while ago that we're going to be using, uh, putting in our own bus stops. So what we have right now, staff has requested bids and specs from different companies. Uh, we've had one contractor that met the bids and specs and gave us a bid. We met with Votran regarding the locations of the different bus shelters and what we were gonna have to do to make them ADA compliant, because many of them weren't. They're on a slope, the concrete, okay? And a lot of them are setting on the sidewalk. You have to get off the sidewalk and walk in the dirt behind it and come around it. Okay, so what we've had to do at this point is we've, after we, based on what Votran told us, we've gone out and we're having surveys done of all five of the sites. In other words, here's where it is. We want 30 feet this way, 30 feet this way, 30 feet this way. We don't need to go forward or we'll be out in the road, okay? But we need to figure out where we can put a new bus shelter and still have ADA compliant sidewalk go along behind it, not through it. So we're planning on three bus shelters by having them up by the end of second quarter 2022. So we, it takes time to do all of these things. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, ADA sidewalk repairs, safety improvements. The vice mayor had mentioned that uh, we have the blinking signs in the road now at two different crossings on the south end of Deltona Boulevard. They have been out repairing sidewalks along stretches, especially of North Normandy. Uh, Deltona Boulevard sidewalks are, are in pretty good shape. North Normandy is, was not. 
So repairs are being done there, and we're going to also, for ADA, start connecting sidewalks that are not connected at this point. In other words, the sidewalk loops around a block, but there's no way to get off that sidewalk through the grass, across the street, through the grass, into the sidewalk at the next block. So we're gonna be hooking those up. And that'll be done by Public Works. They have a contract. Yes. Yeah, so. Let me, uh, let me give you the mic, because this is being taped, so they can hear you. So as, as the commissioner knows, I frequently ride around our area on my e-scooter. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you what you're talking about on Normandy and even Providence. Um, it, even if it wasn't a scooter or a bicycle, you can't make the turn. Like when you're going down the sidewalk, you got to actually come to a almost complete stop to make that sharp yeah. turn to get into the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And then you got to do it on the other side. I don't know who, what they were thinking when they designed that, but it's not very, you can't ride the bike they, or scooter on the street. They were trying to come up with something. Again, I've been here since 1983. Okay, so I've seen a lot of foolishness going on. All right, so the idea was they wanted it to go up they weren't looking at the turn or anything. They wanted to, if you notice, most of them go up so water could flow underneath them. Right. Okay, that's fine. I guess there's a point to it. But that's, that was their main concern, having a sidewalk where water could flow underneath it. Because that's the whole idea there. The, the little bit of swale catches the water and it runs off the road and everything. Okay. Ah. Uh, Yes, he does ride a scooter. Curve improvements, that's dead man's curve. Right now, the River to Sea TPO has told us that to do a study of that curve and the improvements would cost $40,000. Right now, the state is not sending money down to the TPOs for research and studies. They're sending money down for projects, but not the research and study. So we would have to pay the $40,000. We do have an application in, we keep holding on, hoping that, you know, we'll get a break on that. Because, okay, there. We're looking right now, we got that study done, which for, was for the redo, redevelopment of uh, Deltona Boulevard and North Normandy with East Normandy coming out the bottom side of it. But we don't know if it's gonna be a roundabout or just enlarge the intersection, what it's going to be, okay? We, we don't, and that, that's the thing. We don't have the money for that yet. We're still trying to save money up to meet the match that will be required. So we're still years away from these projects. It takes many, many, many years to get enough money to do these large transportation projects. The city has never really accepted the idea of bonding to get this done, which is what most cities end up doing. Uh, they, they bond it, get it done, you have the additional growth, you have the income coming in out of the CRA, which pays the payment for the bond, and you have all the improvements done. But it's sort of a keep saving until you get the money is what we're facing right now. Jerry, if, if, I, if I may, mm -hmm. do you know where um, the suicide curve that he's talking about is? Yeah, yeah. Hard right, yeah. the Piedmont and all that area, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, you go too fast and you end up down with the Muscovy Ducks. It's, it's on Normandy, mm -hmm. so it's, it's before Piet, um So from Saxon Boulevard in, it's about three or four streets in, and then it curves, and it has a yellow sign, a speed limit sign. Mm -hmm. So that, a couple of times, we've had cars actually, you know, not gone on top of the homes because of, of the rail, but mm -hmm. really ugly accidents there. It's really an awful place to have a house anyway. I, it truly is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I, I'd imagine that car rails there because there was probably a serious accident. Or and we've changed it a few times. Yeah. And that study w that you're talking about for the $40,000 would have to be completed before that project can, can be started, even though there was a previous study? Is that correct? No, there was not a previous study for that. The previous study was for the redo, re redevelopment of, redesign of Deltona Boulevard and North Normandy, that intersection where the light is. There's a T there. Okay, that was for that. And the reason we went ahead with that is 
the state did come up with some money, put it forward. That study was $40,000, and we ended up paying only $2,500. 2,500 versus 40,000. That's why we're sort of holding off on the other one. Because like I said, even if we had that study, if we pay the $40,000 and we got the study, we're still years away from being able to do anything with it. So, uh, and this is just a little quick talk about the Saxon sewer. Uh, we have a consultant currently underway to try and come up with best options on getting that done for the commercial sewer. Per board approval, staff has met with Volusia County to discuss the use of city county funds for sewer, which brings up another thing. We are in a charter county. If you have a CRA, the county has to approve your having a CRA. You can't have one on your own, okay? Because the county is putting money into it just like the city is. Okay, when the CRA was done in 2016, the only thing the county was allowing the CRAs to be for, used for the funds, was transportation improvements and utility improvements. Utility improvements being non-municipal utilities. In other words, you can't take county money and put it into a city sewer system. Okay, but we have approached the county to discuss this. I'm not, at this point, I'm not gonna say, oh, they were very receptive, they weren't receptive and everything, but the discussions are going on. So at least they're talking to us at this point. Other questions? I have a question. Um, the three uh, bus stops that you talked about, mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me what the, where they're going to be located, the three new bus stops? Mm -hmm. The exact same spots, more or less, within 20 or 30 feet of the ones where they are now. There's one on Saxon by the Halifax Health mm -hmm. uh, Urgent Care Center, to yep. call it that. You come around the corner and there's one on Deltona Boulevard right in front of where the bank used to be, that brick bank, mm -hmm. which Statford Commons come, uh, you know, turns off there where the Dollar General store is. Okay, you go on down a little bit, there's another one at the post office. Go on down a little bit, and there's one in front of what used to be Sunbank is now Mel Himes Insurance, and then one across the road just past Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay, so that, that's the five locations. Is there a chance we could look at the one in front of the condos? Because there's uh, elderly people that sit and wait for the bus, and the bus stop is actually in the grass. And we basically go to war every month with the county and city to cut that grass, but they wait on the sidewalk for the bus. They don't sit on the bus stop because it's in the grass. Mm -hmm. So if we could maybe look at it. I mean, there's not many people that take the bus from our condos, but there are elderly people that do get on the bus. Yeah, and that, 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 that would be that something, that truthfully, you would need to, okay. Th there's a pecking order that well, we I have to deal be, with. I wanna be top of the pecking order. Okay, there you go. <laughs> All right, be the cream on top. <laughs> the city more or less owns the bus stops mm -hmm. physically. The bus stopping there is Votran. If you, and what you're talking about is a bench. There's no shelter there. I know the spot you're talking about, okay? Uh, there's a bench there. Okay. okay. I mean, but it's on the grass. Even if it was a concrete slab, at least. That's, that's what I'm thinking the right there. Um, and there's one on each side. There's a bench on each side of the street. So. Mm -hmm. But also there's on the sidewalk. a conflict of interest there because number one the city wants the bus stop yes the city probably we could get the city sometime in the future to put a concrete slab there so the bench could sit on it instead of being in the grass the right-of-way belongs to the county they own Providence Boulevard so it's not the city saying yes we want it there or we can tell the county 
We get it. Okay. It's one of those things. I mean, there, we there's. We can't show up. We put a slab of concrete. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you got Providence, Saxon are the two major feeders within the city that are not city thoroughfares, T fairs. So it, it's something. Look, my email is J Mays, J M A Y E S, at deltonafl.gov. Send me an email. Definitely will. Okay, send me an email and I will address that with the city manager or my commissioner will address it with the city manager or the vice mayor would address it with the city manager. You got all these titles. Um, is, would that be ADA compliance issue as well? Absolutely not. No? Okay. Mm -mm. Not if it's in the grass because someone with a wheelchair cannot sit to the side of it like that in their wheelchair and maneuver to get back up onto the sidewalk we to get onto the bus. The wheelchair needs to sit there and have to wait in the street. Mm -hmm. The bus would have to pull up in front of our road to get them on the bus. Mm -hmm. So it's not ADA compliant? No, the one right out here in front of City Hall is ADA compliant. When the bus pulls up, they lower the bus down because there's a ramp and then you come right up into it and your wheelchair can go into the bus. Yeah, send us an email and we'll mm -hmm. follow up on it. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah, um, they basically, I, I love the plans. It's, it's alarming to hear that it's years off. I really think that it's, it's kind of past due, uh, especially with the expansion of the people coming in. I feel like when we allow developers to build in our community that we should be demanding, like my mom just built a house, she had to pay impact fees. Okay, uh, okay. What, what Understand section are you this, in the, the only thing, only money that can be spent and the CRA is the CRA collected money. Unless the city says, okay, we're going to do this. The city got grant money and spent their money to put in the flashing crossings. Right. Okay, uh, hey, that was not CRA funds. Let me finish with that though, but I feel like, uh, especially on like Deltona Boulevard, there's so, many, there's so much unused. Are you part of that area? I, I live in that area. Where do you live? I, I live near Twin Lakes, mm -hmm. um, so you know, Cloverleaf, Deltona Boulevard, like sure. we, we live there and I just feel like we can do so much more with like, I think there's a, there's like a, what used to be a bank with cars that are just parked under it. Like it would be nice to tear that down, modern live, let's go down to Lake Mary and see what they have going on down there with the, you know, live, work, play area. Um, I would like to see more restaurants come into Deltona. There's a lot of residents that live where we live. We shouldn't have to get in our cars and go to Orange City or go to Sanford just to do what, what I would consider our, our normal things. I feel like if, if we can somehow encourage businesses to come here and, and you know, developers to develop that area, maybe you can get some of the money to, to fund the project somehow. Okay. I understand where you're coming from on it. We have. We have very little development potential other than that commercial area up at Saxon. There are one or two, I'll get it. Right. Cherry, I'll get it. Um, the main thing we can do is try and redevelop some of the areas and raise the taxes, thank you. Raise the taxes up that are collected on that commercial property. All right, yeah, I would love to see some, some of that, some of the, those commercial buildings are just outdated. Like it, maybe it made sense in the 60s and 70s when Deltona yeah. came in, mm -hmm. um, but it's just now there, we can do so much more with that space um, and keep people from having to, you know, we just went to Orange City before we came to this meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you, you should have seen the cars on Saxon. We had to wait for like two traffic light cycles just oh, yeah. to get through. I mean, we should be able to stay in Deltona uh, in our local area and have options. There's enough people who live here. Agree. Okay, that's the CRA presentation. I noticed on the thing there was a, a issue on ECHO. Was there a question on that or anything else I can answer for you right now? Well, the ECHO project would be by Lakeshore Drive. Am I okay, correct? and that's not my project. I'm very familiar with ECHO, okay, but uh, that, is, that is a parks and rec and public works project down there right now. Right, I wish I had known that because I thought it was still under you. But, and this is why these ladies are here, because that's their area. What would area. you like for me to answer about it? I don't know. What would the biggest thing right now, I mean, I, I get the whole project. I went to the meetings and you guys came to the comments to talk to us. But um, we, and this is for the city manager, you know, to, they, they, they promised us a buffer because right now what we look at, we leave our condo, beautiful view of the lake, you know, that's nice, but it's a pile of debris. Yeah. And the black paper that's there separated. We just want a couple of, high bushes temporary to block that. So it still looks like our natural area that it was before. Yeah, and I can answer that. 
um, the city man, the active city manager is working on it, mm -hmm. um, and they are going to be ordering, you know, plants and buffers to put there temporarily. We're also working on developers that, um, you know, looking forward to uh, being able to build here. And one of the uh, things that we are asking them is, are you willing to um, relocate trees from one area to another? or buy trees and, and so, you know, we're trying to work with that as well. Um, so we will, a buffer will be going out there. It's not gonna be the one that you had, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but there'll be something going on there. So if anything could go, I mean, just something so it doesn't look as unattractive. I mean, the lake looks beautiful, but if there was a thing of hedges right there, yeah, and it's gonna it's gonna look like that until the project is finished, until they you know put everything in and, place. Yeah, and then it is in the plans to put in buffer, overstory, middle story, understory, to block that. But if it's put in now, it's gonna get destroyed putting right. the project in. And I totally understand it, but what we had there before, like what taking all that stuff out, I get the purpose of it, but it, I mean for us who live on Sweetgum, which is that block right there. Oh, yeah. Patrick, you pulled in, it was an overhang of trees, and now it's just... If we were in a beautiful green space, then now we're in a barren... I mean, it really looks bad. Yeah, we, we, we're going to work on it again uh, until the project is finished. Yeah, we I can't understand. do anything, and... Um, in all fairness, what the city touched was city property, um, so we're trying to you know, make our residents in the Edgewater Condos happy again uh, by planting the buffers and stuff. But right now it won't make any sense because when construction starts again, they're just gonna break them, you know, yeah. uh, cut them down. But it'll be back. You know, we give you our word that it will be back. And we're, gonna, we're looking at other um, areas that are building new homes and stuff and asking, can you look when you start clearing what trees can be moved. So then maybe we can take some of the greenery that it's already grown and is it possible to relocate to your area? Yeah. Uh, I know that. The pile that's there is gonna stay? Is that part of the? What pile? The pile they left behind? No, that's, no, that, that's that gonna be cleaned, cleaned out. out. I mean, it's everything is gonna be mm -hmm. cleaned out. Um, there's a nice project going on for that area, which, well, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing a meeting in your section because we used to have two meetings. I used to have two meetings, one here and one over by Lakeshore Drive. Um, and if I can't do it at the center of Lakeshore Drive, I will ask you permission to do it over by you. Because um, their residents, they all come out to meetings. I mean, they really fill out the room, which sometimes is standing room only. So I really look forward to having another we town hall. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having another town hall. The only thing is, is that if you, you're, you're talking about having a town hall there in our pavilion, yeah, they have to park the door. There's no parking. There's no parking. Who? If you, keep, you invited everybody, like. Well, have to, it has to be an open park. meeting. Yeah. You guys have to park our street. They can walk. <laughs> Oh, he'll put me in, he'll pick me up in his moped. <laughs> Thank you. But if there are any more questions for Jerry, um, again, you know, th these are the plans the city has. Um, I know Jerry's heart in his, is in it because he lives in this district, and um, we're just, you know, looking for ideas, input from the residents and stuff like that, and hopefully, you know, even if I'm not here, I'll be, you know, coming to fight with Jerry so that it can be pushed and, and we can see the difference on, on Deltona Boulevard. Because mm -hmm. I live there. I live, well, I'm not on Deltona Boulevard, not too far away. Um, any other questions for Jerry? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So, um, where did I put my, let me just get my cheap card here. Just to um, request, there are forms in the back, if you can fill them out. Um, there is a, a form for the, a health form for Evan Health. If you could fill it out and give it to me before you leave as well. Um, 
And before you leave, also, I have some uh, home test kits for COVID, uh, thanks to Family Health Source. So before you leave, please uh, remind me to give you one and some hand sanitizers uh, from the city of Deltona as well. So our next speaker is going to be Captain McDaniel. Um, I don't know if how many of you worked with Captain Marino. I know he went to a few HOA meetings. Uh, Saxon Ridge, I know he went to, I think he went to the um, 4th of July event at um, Edgewater. He, he, I think he came very quickly and left in our uh, Sheriff Chitwood as well. And what I like about our uh, Sheriff's Department is that when I ask them to come to our meetings, they're always here, they're always available. If our captain can't make it, they always send a representative you have one of their sheriffs at the, uh, you know, uh, at the uh, town, uh, Twin Lakes meeting, which gave a very nice compliment, the fact that where he lives, he doesn't see that. He doesn't see the involvement of the city bringing the uh, deputies to be involved in their HOA meeting. So he gave us a nice compliment, and, and he also complimented the sheriff's department. So having said that, um, Captain Marino, or Chief Marino now, got a promotion and left us, but we're not gonna hold it against him. He did get a promotion, and we, you know, we congratulate him, and we're happy that we have uh, Captain McDaniel here with us, who's going to give us a little um, briefing on on the city of Deltona under his. Come on, let me just take this out of here because I'm blocking uh, you. Good evening. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I sit. Uh, it's been a long day. Um, as Vice Mayor said, my name is uh, Captain Kyle McDaniel. Uh, I've been with the County of Volusia for 22 years. Um, I've spent a majority of my career in and out of the city of Deltona. Uh, I was a patrol sergeant here in the city of Deltona. Uh, I was a CID sergeant here in the city of Deltona. Uh, I was a lieutenant here in the city of Deltona. Uh, so I've spent uh, quite some time in the city of Deltona. Um, I have uh, dealt with the uh, city commission, um, the city managers. Uh, I'm fairly familiar with the inner workings um, of city government. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up here in Volusia County. Uh, this is the only job I've ever known. Um, I've been on our uh, Sheriff's Office SWAT team for 17 years. I am currently one of the commanders of the team, um, and I've spent a majority of my time in investigations. Prior to getting promoted in December, I was uh, assistant commander of our investigative services section, which ran all of the uh, detectives throughout the county, including the city of Deltona. Um, Monday evening before the council, I gave an end of year report. Um, that report was, in my eyes, very impressive. Our part one crime statistics were at an overall clearance rate of 51%. That means that we cleared 51% of our part one crimes, which are our serious crimes, our burglaries, our larcenies, our homicides, our arsons, we cleared 51% of those. The national average is 31%. So the men and women that you guys have working for the city of Deltona, for you, the citizens, are doing a heck of a job. And I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it. Um, with that being said, uh, I'm more than happy to answer anybody's questions. Um, I spoke to Rachel beforehand. Um, we will have a public ComStat meeting here in this room tomorrow morning uh, to discuss crime for uh, the ComStat period of December. So if anybody can make it, I know it's during business hours, most people have to work, but I'd love to, I'd love to see uh, some citizens of Deltona in the room. So with that being said, does anybody have any questions for me? No? I, uh, and the Monday evening commission meeting, uh, the commissioners, the mayor and vice mayor had made mention of bringing all the HOAs together 
um, to talk about what the sheriff's office can offer the HOAs on technology. Um, we currently have one HOA in Deltona that has um, uh, tag readers at the ingress and egress of their uh, community. Um, I mean, this is something you will have to pay for, but uh, I, I, I would like to at least have uh, a discussion about it. So I think the commission will move forward on that and then uh, the sheriff's office will uh, be happy to discuss that. Hey, so when you guys came to our um, HOA meeting, um, this was discussed and I think there was a mixed response in the room from the folks on um, whether they were supportive or not. I will tell you that our residents, we do want cameras, we're gonna look into it. Do you guys reassured us though that, and they couldn't tell us where the location of it was, but you guys already have plate readers on Cloverleaf and Anderson, which kind of lead into our mm -hmm. subdivision. So I think it's kind of, uh, it, I, I did watch that part of the um, of the meeting on Monday night. So just to give you know my response, we're certainly going to have a board meeting again, and I'm sure we'll bring it up. Um, we recently discussed um, possibly upgrading our, uh, and again we need to discuss this as a board. Um, our the connection for the phone for the gate can be converted into like maybe broadband, and maybe we can get some type of broadband type of camera with cloud storage be a little more efficient, but I, I don't think, I mean, I can put it, I can ask the residents of the community uh, through various- Yeah, I think the issue was a lot to do with privacy. Yeah, um, yeah. And I don't, I know the uh, captain would would uh, be the first one to agree that it's not about privacy, I think it's about safety. In whatever cameras we have around the city of Deltona, and like you said, you know, these are things that they can't say where they are or, or who has them, um, but they keep the city safe. That's how they how they find out who the people that come into the city, which most of the time they don't even, they're not even Deltona residents. That's how they catch them because they can keep track of what cars come in from all the entrances that the city of Deltona has. Um, and I don't have a problem with you want to go invade my privacy. That's fine with me as long as I'm being kept safe and my family's being kept safe. And I think one of the issues with, with your um, HOA um, members were the privacy yeah, well. and also the uh, access to stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure um, Captain uh, McDaniel can probably have a meeting, attend, even if it's a private meeting among the, your HOA to give more explanation. Because one of our, like he said, one of our um, other uh, HOAs, which is on, in District 3, already has it. Um, and, and they welcome it with open arms. They didn't even have an issue with privacy or whatever. Um, and, and, and we started this when the uh, ring program came on board and, and the sheriff's department was actually giving them away for free when they first came out um, so that you can hook it up so the sheriff's department can have access to your system from their, uh, their site. If something happens within your area, and they ask you, can we look at your, do you want to explain that? I don't want to take away. Yeah, so what are, uh, we have a real-time crime center. Um, if we have a crime in progress or a crime that has occurred, uh, we can send out a ring notification. Um, if you've got your uh, ring set up, you'll get an email from us saying uh, something has occurred between um, the hours of this time. Would you share your footage with us? You can review it if you think it's of note. Uh, you can send it to us. If you don't, then you don't. And so because of that, at the uh, next board meeting that we have, because we've already kind of discussed it over email, I would like to put forth using some type of ring camera because they do have a cloud backup. And I think that um, we can convert our, they have an old school telephone line that we pay a lot of money for every month. Mm -hmm. I think we can get some type of internet connection and phone line and, and then, um, like you said, you know, if there's a crime that occurs in our community, if someone like gets through the gates somehow, you know, there's some way that we can release that to help. I think, I know our residence is very popular. They want cameras. It's just, I'm not sure how popular it is to have it hooked up to anything. Right. Um, that's where kind of the discussion went. Well, I, I, think, I think what the sergeant that came uh, to your meeting was suggesting was a camera at the gates. 
not right. at each person's home because uh, once they right. pass through the gate, then you already capture them, right? That's what they said. Yeah. And and so I I can say this because it's already it, you know this was in uh, newspapers and in public, but one of the uh, people that got caught uh, when he approached a younger uh, one of our young students here was because somebody a resident called and said I have a picture of that guy uh, riding a bike in my neighborhood and it came through their ring. And so that helped, you know, the uh, sheriff's department, you know, uh, zoom in on that person. So definitely, I, I think you just guys need it because since you have gates, it should just be on your, in, you know, your gates. Right. Because once and they it, go you know, in, you know. Also, you know, my house is actually in the entrance where the gates are, so I have some personal preferences on how that's all set up as well because, you know, all these cars, I'm mm -hmm. outside the gate, so like, I, if you, if you come through, you'll see. Yeah. I don't want that camera like facing my house at all, and I've been very vocal about that in the community. Well, that's something that you would have to discuss with the person who installs your camera, right. and then the rest is you know about hooking it up and connecting to the sheriff's department. But if when you have your HOA meeting, if you let me know, I'll send an invitation. Um, to Captain McDaniels, and, and if he can't make it, just like the last time Captain Marina couldn't make it, he will send somebody um, to speak to you about it. And did you say you're going to reach out to uh, Rusty, the president, and and ask um, about the? You were going to reach out to all the HOA presidents or some of them. I left that in the hands of uh, the commission to uh, reach out to all the HOAs. Uh, I sent an email to um, Mr. Peters. Um, to kind of set something up, so. Yeah. Okay. So in our district, it's two HOAs have been involved already, yours and the other one, and then I don't know if um, Rachel wants to bring it up to the uh, H water condos, even though you spoke to the captain about other stuff, right, about H, uh, your condos. So, I mean, it's only a plus uh, for the safety of your residents in there. You have to have electric at the entrance, so that's the way. You have to install it, like that's what you have to pay for it install it. Uh, not necessarily with some of the new technology we have. So um, the technology that we have up at the HOA that we're referring to, there's no power. So how does that work? Uh, solar. Solar. Solar and batteries. But it have to be a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, yeah, they they have uh, air cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely like to bring that up to our board because you know we're there's not really an entity like us anywhere. Uh, so the 240 with eight side, and that's 500, I can't even add that right now, 550 some units. Yeah. You know, so it's, and we only have one way in and one way out. Yeah, not to, not to get into the weeds on this, because we can get into mm -hmm. those um, during this, uh, this next meeting, but the benefit of these cameras, and they're not necessarily cameras, they take still photographs. So a car goes by, it senses the reflection of the tag, it takes a photo of the tag, and it sends us alerts if the vehicle is stolen, if the owner of the vehicle has a suspended driver's license, if the owner of the vehicle has an arrest warrant, um, any parameters that we can set. So we're not looking at every tag that gets captured. We're only looking at the ones that are alerted to us. So for example, you have a stolen car that hits off of your license plate reader coming into your neighborhood at three o'clock in the morning. What are they doing there? They They're up to no good. So that alerts every deputy that's awesome. in Deltona saying a stolen car just entered your neighborhood. And then they can immediately deploy resources because they know what the cars in there are doing. Really? It's it's committing crimes. Mm -hmm. So that that's what some of the technology is used for. And I understand a lot of you get that 50-50 of I like it, I don't like it. It's my privacy, and I I uh, I can un understand that. But most of it is just not really having a firm grasp of what exactly we're doing. And that's, that's just all in education, and we're more than happy to educate them. Right, and, and that could be part of your HOA meeting next time, if you let me know. We're not an HOA, we're COA. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if you invite us to your next meeting, I'll be, you know, we're gonna have a, pass it over. We're gonna have a meeting the first week of March, and if it's something, I'll talk with Charlie, yeah. and we'll discuss it, right. and we would love to yeah. have you 
have you guys tell the residents about it. I don't see anything wrong. With yeah, and we'll forward the invitation to the sheriff's department, and they'll they'll take it from there. And that's a it's a good spot where we are too down by Lakeshore. You know, when the people get off of I four and they want to hide, they bring down Lakeshore Drive. We know it, but it'd be great. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, there is. We only have three entrances. Okay. Great. So that'll be your job to okay. let us know when your next one is, and okay. I'll forward the invite to Captain McDonald's, and then he'll, if he can make it, he he will, and if not, then he'll send somebody else, yeah, like they've always done. Okay. So Captain, thank you so much for being here. Thank and you I know for having you me. Had a long day, so you don't have to stay for the remainder of the meeting. Okay. Any other questions for me before I leave? Did Thanks. you have something to speak to him about in private? That's actually we did. We, yep. Okay. I hope to see you tomorrow morning, Rachel. We'll do my best. Great. Thanks. All Thank right. you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. So the next one on the agenda is um, it's it's the department that keeps our you know streets and everything code and and um, they're doing a great job in District Three. Um, so I want to uh, call Richard, who is the um, assistant director of code compliance. It's no longer code enforcement. It's been changed to code compliance. So I'm going to let Richard talk to you and, and share information of what has been happening uh, in District 3. And I also want to let you know that Richard has been forwarding a report uh, to me to let me know everything that has been going on in District 3 and what has been corrected and what's pending and stuff like that. So I'll let him talk to you a little bit more on that. All right. So my name is Richard Lovett. I'm the Assistant Director of Code Compliance. So as part of Code Compliance, we just don't do the codes. We do animal control and we also do the trash or the solid waste. We do everything that's, that falls under any kind of code within the city is handled by one officer. Um, so the idea is I can put more officers in a certain area and the way we have the city split up is we have the city split up into five zones and I have a zone, a zone officer in every, in every zone seven days a week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So there's only like four days a year that we close for physical holidays. Um, besides that, we are on every day of the week. Um, so one of the things that we've been doing, and we, and we changed a lot, um, last year we went through a lot of meetings, we did make a lot of changes, um, not only name changes, um, we changed a lot of what we were doing. Um, we are in the middle of, I've got a lot of tra uh, staff that's in training right now, so we upped our training, our uh, staff. We went back up to levels that we were at before um, to give adequate service to the citizens that were out there. Um, some of the new things that we're starting to do is, um, is like um, the vice mayor said, is one of the things that I can share with her now is I can share statistics on what we're doing. Um, I have an analyst that puts together and I get weekly reports from her, what the officers are doing, what kind of cases they're open. So we look at that, we see what they're doing, how they're handling it, and we see what kind of cases are going on in each district. The idea is we can start getting a little bit of a better handle on what's going on in certain areas so we know where to pull different employees to doing. Um, but besides that, I, I think her di uh, the vice mayor district has seen the most that we've done. Um, last time we had one of these meetings, it got brought up to, and they asked us about the houses that were at the corner of North Normandy and Saxon. And if you look at that now, you'll see it's nothing but an empty field. Um, I explained to them, we were in the process, we were working on something, we had some stuff we were working, we were working with CRA to get it done. Um, we actually went to the owner of that property, he had seven houses. We gave him, I think, four months to give us a solid answer what he was going to do, either to tear them down or bring them back up to code and get it looking back livable again. Um, we didn't think it was fair for the corner to stay. We kept hearing it was going for sale. This person was buying it. So they kept looking time. So finally we said, you know what? This is your end date. You have until this date to get it done. So we actually moved forward, took that one to the magistrate. We gave them a set amount of days and that's why those houses are down. So um, one of the other ones that we worked with doing that same thing is 
Deltona Boulevard and Enterprise Road, there was the empty gas station for years that was kept getting graffitied, kept getting the boards were coming down. We did the same thing with them. We went back and forth with their attorneys and made a discussion. This is what you have to do. This is what you got. This is what the city's expecting if you want to keep that building there. So that was their agreement was to take the building down. Um, we tried to get them to take the whole way, dr driveway down and everything to make it just a vacant lot and let it grow back, you know, and go from there. But they really wanted to keep the asphalt driveway. So we said, okay, if you're gonna keep the asphalt driveway, you gotta keep it maintained. We want ballards up because we don't want people pulling into those properties and doing stuff that's not supposed to be done and you gotta maintain it. So that's where we are with them. We're keeping them straight on it. Um, one of the things I heard you brought up is the old bank next to the post office. So that is a active business that they run out of there. So it's usually it's drivers. So that's why you don't see a lot of business going on out there and it looks like it's closed. They do, it's a lot of uh, overnight business that they do. And the ATM. Huh? And their ATM is active. Yep. They do repairs on ATM. So that's why you don't see a lot going on there and it looks like it's vacant. Yeah, because we went and talked to them, had them fix the building. Um, and that's another thing that we're doing. Um, and I just, I just told the vice mayor tonight, another one that we're looking at in her district that we just started today. Um, I've got two officers that are working strictly on commercial businesses. And our idea is we've gone completely down Deltona Boulevard. We've talked to every single one of those business owners. And we said, this is what you gotta do to come back in compliance, A, B, and C. Um, I think our last business owner that has not complied went to the magistrate last month. We gave him 60 days to comply to get it back up. Our thing is these businesses need to be held to the same standards that every other citizen's being held to. These are businesses that have been allowed to just, you know, these were built in the 60s and the early 70s and they've been there for a long time and they needed a lot of maintenance. They need to go. They need to go. <laughs> that, that I can't do. Um, there, there are some that we do. We do have some that's working on. You have the old Chevron station that's there. Um, we are working with them through the magistrate. Um, we are looking at either they're going to get that back in compliance or we're gonna look at taking it down. So that, that's one of the things we're working on. They, I do have an engineer, so we know they are working forward to keep moving it, but it's not at the pace that, that they agreed upon. So we are trying to hold their feet to the fire because this, those businesses have been allowed to be like that for a long time and we don't think it's fair, so we're trying to get that. Um, the latest one that y'all will see, and it's going to take some time, is that, like you said, coming across on Saxon Boulevard. As soon as you come into the city, you see that gas station on the left-hand side. So my officers have started working on that one. We're gonna do the same thing on that one. You're either gonna fix it or tear it down, one of the two. So that's the things we're, we're working on, a lot of more commercials where we've never done. Um, I'm thinking within the next four months, I'll finally be fully staffed to where I have all my officers, I have them trained, I have them out in the field, and at that point, I'll have people focusing on these main streets for y'all, not just in the actual artillery streets, auxiliary streets, but they'll be on the main streets. So we're, we've got a plan, we're moving forward. I'm just trying to get everybody trained so we can get in there. But the businesses has been the ones we're not, we're not backing off on. We, um, like I said, we finished Deltona, uh, Deltona Boulevard. We're working up Providence. Um, we've gotten, I think on Providence, we stopped at Normandy as, as far as we've gotten north. Um, we've got, you got to imagine when we're dealing with these businesses, it's a lot of cases, a lot of time and a lot of stuff. Um, and then we just started down Saxon. So we're going to start moving that way. Mm -hmm. So you, you're going to start seeing it. It is taking some time and, you know, and especially when we're dealing with commercial businesses, it does take a lot longer, but we are looking to get the results. Um, I'm hoping by next year we'll have all the commercial businesses on a one, we've already gone through them one time and then they're gonna be on a yearly schedule to where every year 
I have two officers that just do nothing but go straight back to commercials. Anything that's a problem, we write it up and we go from there again. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna keep them on a constant schedule from here on mm -hmm. out. You know, and I, 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 I wanna to say that they, they've been pretty um, well working with the city. I don't think we've had any issues with a lot of the businesses there, so whatever, you know, they have to, uh, uh, whatever work they have to do to come in compliance, they have been working with the city. Some have even reached out to us and said, so help me, what is it that I, I need to do and how can I do it? So I think we've been pretty lucky with some, most of the businesses on Deltona Boulevard. I don't think we've had much challenges. No, um, we've got, um one that's looking at putting in a brand new whole, they're gonna have to re completely redo their parking lot. And you're talking about $30,000 expense to them. So we're trying to work with them to give them that time because that is a heavy expense. But at the same time, we can't, we were telling them you can't let it go because it's gonna cause further issues down the road. Mm -hmm. So we're working, but we're, we're setting guidelines at, at a certain point where it's gotta be done. Mm -hmm. Any questions? And I know that um, you probably see the outside because I know that they don't go into Twin Lakes and they don't go into your uh, area, but you do travel around so you see all, all the work that, that they have been doing, so. We actually do go in the subdivisions. In Twin Lakes? Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. Yeah, we've got a couple of the properties in there. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, every, um, we've got codes to get into the gates. So we go in there every so often and run through. Usually everything y'all are all taken care of. Yeah, because if you, if you um, find something, I would argue that our property manager probably should they're, they're, pr they're pretty good on it. Um, but yeah, we, we do go through the subdivisions, you know, because we do know that sometimes people move out, things happen. Um, one of the things we're doing now is we get reports every day from the trash company on too much trash that's being put out there, stuff they quoted. So as soon as we get that report, that report's dispatched to the officers, so the officers are handling that the next day. So as soon as we're getting this information, we're right on top of it. We're, we've tried to change it up. Um, we used to have about a, with trash and right away, it used to be about a five day turnaround from when you first saw it to when you picked it up. Now we're down to 48 hours. Um, so we're trying to cut it down as best we can. We figured that's the best way we can cut it down. I've, I've worked with Waste Pro to go, hey, this is what we want, this is what we wanna do. How, do you, how can we do it to make it work for both of us? So when we get those reports, we put the cases in and then we give them a time that they can pick it up. So we're, we're trying to cut the time down that y'all see this stuff out there as much as possible. Any other questions? So, if you yeah. ever have any issues down there, all you gotta do is call us too, you know, on top of that. Mm -hmm. But. So you do, do you see someone in animal control too? Yes. We do animal control too. I have to compliment your guys. There's been two times I've been with them. So, we had an alligator. Oh, wait a minute. You had the alligator can, in can the we pool. Have yes, that? I remember wait, that. Wait, I need to have that on. Yeah, speaker, uh, wait, wait. I'm sorry, I'm not loud enough. I can talk. <laughs> I need, I need sorry. that to be more. I, I just have to compliment your guys because um, we did have a baby alligator in our pool. And they handled it wonderfully, and then we had a rooster. And they also <laughs> chased after that thing. And I did watch Didn't them you chase have a bear? after. bear? What's that? Didn't we you had, also have a bear? We had a bear twice. Yeah, and they just pass through property. They don't stop. That's why we don't. You know, we tell people not to have bird feeders and stuff like that. But the the gator was. Yeah, we'll awesome. go. We'll go and remove those if they're under um, four feet. FWC will allow us to remove them with no questions. If they're over four feet, they'd rather their trappers do them. We had one. We did have one that a trapper had to come out for. Mm -hmm. It wasn't actually on our property. It was underneath the boardwalk, but he was badly, badly wounded. So, and they were out quickly too. But the gator in our pool was. Re I was applauding them how fast. The one in, in the crust. The road. Oh yeah, that was the same one. Yeah, I that was the same one. You guys have that too. problem all the time. Like the Lakeland Road is like right there. That's where they live. Exactly. <laughs> well, I, you know, we're always happy to hear um, feedback when when you're satisfied with the with job of of our, our staff. Um, so we're glad to hear that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let me just put this here real quick. So. Um, 
Richard was the last person to speak, and I just want to thank you guys for being out here with us. Um, there's so many questions that people have for me, and then when I have the meetings, I really would, for those of you watching this video from home, um, you, you know, you're welcome to send me an email if you have questions on this uh, meeting that took place, on anything that was covered on this agenda. But it's so nice when you guys come out and, and, and mingle and, and, and have a conversation about things with us. Um, our next meeting, I'm, I'm hoping to see if we can take down to Edgewater Condos uh, so that your uh, residents can, can be part of it. And then I can probably bring some, the person who's in charge of that ECHO project there. Uh, I know we promised to get your residents involved in that project, so, you know, I'm going to look forward to that. Um, if you guys have any more questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer. There is a questionnaire, if you can fill it out. It mostly uh, wants to know how was the session, you know, what did you like, what didn't you like. What else do you want? What else do you want us to bring you? Uh, we're trying to, I'm trying to do town hall meetings not only with staff, um, because the reason why I invite staff is so everybody knows who's behind the scenes and what is that they do and who's responsible for that, right? But I also want to bring um, people to speak on uh, education, uh, on health, and, and other things that you want to know about, right? So you guys put it here. Let me know what speakers you want, social security issues, uh, health issues, and stuff like that. I'll be more than happy to reach out to people like that and bring them to the town hall meetings. Um, just, you know, fill out the information, and I will bring it and give it to our secretaries. And then there's another sheet of a health uh, questionnaire. That's for Avent Health. We're going to have a focus meeting at the center March 1st uh, with Avent Health. And what they want to know is, what are we missing? What else can we do to better your health and, and, and what other services can we provide to make it easier for you to, you know, to take care of your health? So if you can answer that form as well, you know, I'd be appreciated. And then I have, on behalf of Family Health Center, I have some test kits, so please pick them up before you leave. And on behalf of the city of Deltona, we have the uh, sanitizer spray for your hands. Again, take one in, um, with you. And thank you again so much. We really appreciate you coming out. We love to hear your input, regardless of, of what it is. Uh, and we always try our best to meet you 100% of the way. Uh, this is what we're here for. So uh, you have my name, bit, my number. Reach out to me. And whatever I can help with, I will definitely do that, okay? So thank you so much. Uh, again, for those of you who are watching this video uh, of tonight's town hall meeting, Thank you for watching. Again, if you have any questions or that you want to uh, feel to us on what we covered today, please do so. Thank you. Good night. Richard, thank you so much for coming out here today.